All right, so my tools have finally come in. I can actually begin work on uh, doing the final cut sheet for Excalibur now. I've actually originally had that project planned back all the way during Thanksgiving, but I never got around to actually building the thing because I couldn't get the cut sheet right. And here's why. I've been trying to do everything up until this point with nothing but a compass. I mean, it served me well, it works great, and uh, unfortunately Excalibur has a few curves that I simply could not do with the compass because they were not consistent, namely curves such as the the, um, the cross guard area. That was not a consistent curve, so using a compass was out of out of the question. In fact, the original cut sheet looks something like this. It was all dimensioned and everything, and sizing wise, it was pretty bad. So I ended up scrapping this whole thing, and uh, we'll be doing a redesign using these tools. But these are French curve tools, as you can see, they all come in different shapes, sizes, and grips, apparently. But, I've been eyeing these for quite a while, but I never had a good reason to pick them up until now. I'll put a link in the description, you can get these online. I think these were like, six bucks when I got them. They're not too expensive, but, if you're planning on doing any more swords other than just this one Excalibur, these I would highly recommend because you can draw all sorts of manners of curves, be it for like the blade's tip, uh, cross guards, handles, what have you not. So I'm finally getting around to uh, getting a final cut sheet for this thing. Just gotta erase some of the older lines, an older design. Uh, Excalibur? Jesus. This sword has probably one of the worst uh, scaling I've ever seen. And I've accidentally erased a line I wanted. Crap. But to give you an idea how much of a headache this sword has been, this is actually the third redesign and I've been working on this thing since the um, beginning of December. Actually, it's, it was closer to around Thanksgiving. Around the last week of uh, November-ish, so I really started working on this thing. And... Crap, I do not remember which edge I used for this. I think it may have been this one. But yeah. Curve tools. Very, very helpful. But yeah. Blade, handle, that's finally been designed. I went with the uh, the novel's depiction of the Excalibur instead, mostly because of this that flail thing the anime has going on, on the side. I, I was not a huge fan of that. Just made it look overly clunky, I guess. It just doesn't have that slim, sharp blade feel. It just looks like you know, here's a slab of metal painted whatever color. It's a fairly large jump from where we last were to this point in the build. Most of this has been paneled. Although, what I want to discuss is uh, sections like these, where you can't lay it flat against a cutting surface. Now, there's a lot of ways you can do this. Um, one way would be to build a, like, just a small cutting surface underneath here and just hold it up against that and take your knife and cut it. Or the other method that I prefer to use, it's a bit more dangerous, therefore I don't recommend you try this, is that you can actually whittle it, kind of like wood, the hardened paper stuff. With a sharp enough knife, you can actually hold this, like such, and... sort of carve it like this. Though it does take quite a bit of practice so you don't actually cut your template by accident.
then on some of the areas like the uh, round surfaces, the best way to do this is to uh, get as much as you can off on a flat surface and then use that same method to uh, clean up the edges. So here's what ultimately happened. Um, I ended up scrapping the design for the sword off of the anime, mostly because were, I had all sorts of sizing issues and inconsistencies with that. So I ended up doing the final design off of this one picture. I believe this one came from the novel. And uh, ran all the sizing off of her hand. Luckily, I've got someone about her size in the house, so I said, oh, hey, hold this ruler for me. And uh, that was that. So this is what the final design will be based off of. The color scheme, on the other hand, was taken from the anime. Uh, actually, I've got a few pictures open just to show what I mean by inconsistencies. Like this one here, it's got no flail on the flare. Um, whatever it's called, the little flare portion. It's not that here, as you can see. It's got the, the uh, flare on this particular sword. Not much of a flare here, uh, practically no flare here. This is just a scabbard taken on that shape, so that's not really indicative. So this is a pretty questionable picture. But what I ended up doing for color was I used this program called Color Cop, as left over from when I was doing web design. And uh, basically took a sample of this and uh, used a website called uh, Color Hex to figure out what the actual values for all these colors are. As you can see, and something a little bit more useful, the all sorts of, all sorts of gradients, uh, printer color. And then this is what I was. This is what I was after because if you're mixing acrylic paint, this is something you can use as a guideline. And uh, that's pretty much what I blended that color to. It is slightly off though on mine. I didn't quite get it right because it's a little more difficult to do with spray paint. But ultimately, this is what I ended up choosing to do. No red in the color though, because spray paint does not blend well with red. Alright, so we're back in the office, and this is how the color of the blade turned out. It's a bit brighter of a yellow than I wanted it to, but unfortunately this was the closest paint I could come to find. Mostly because all of the other golden ones are either way too dark or metallic. and. We've all seen how metallic blades come out. They just don't really. Let me let me show you how this. Like this is the grimoire I had. You notice this is actually a metallic silver, and it doesn't quite. It, it's somewhere between gray and not so much metallic. Metallic does not show up very well on paper, so that is why I opted out of that. So this particular shade of yellow was the next best thing, as it was the closest thing on the shelf resembling a very yellow gold color. Although if I do find a darker shade of yellow or a lighter shade of gold, I am thinking about pla plating the edge, just you know, just for a little bit of uh, contrast, that particular shade of gold. If I ever get around to it, I'll post a picture, so follow along for that. The I don't know what to call this thing, the little decoration piece. The best thing I could come up with was that was mixing these two particular colors of paint. Now this is a navy blue, and this is the jade color that I picked up uh, a couple months back for the Lambent Light build. And I'd say they mixed pretty okay, considering that spray paint really doesn't mix all too well. But my other option was to use acrylic paint, and with something this size, you'd wind up getting very noticeable brush strokes in the end, so I didn't want to leave those behind. So spray paint was my next best option. Now these little plastic gems, uh, these are just like something I picked up at the craft store. These are 12 millimeter uh, acrylic, I forgot what they're called, rhinestones, something of the sort. But yeah, six of those and just glue them into place, that's really about it. I've yet to get around getting the emblem in the middle of it, but I might put something different there just for personalization. Now in hindsight, I kind of wish I left this, the outer edge of this thing white, but I might go back over it with some acrylic paint and uh, paint over that. This piece, just, you know, white, 
paper. I didn't paint any of it, just left it as is. And then the stones in the back, these aren't actually stones, except they're actually the same uh, hardened paper material, just spray painted uh, a near identical color to this. Mostly because I could not find any rhinestones to match this size or this shape. And as you may notice, there is a, an orb or a marble or something of the sort missing back here. Now, I have seen some certain scenes with the marble. I've seen others without it. I've seen some that were just rounded over, so that is pretty debatable, but I think I like it like this. Okay, so this particular build log wasn't as long or, I guess, not as many run-ins of a problem compared to some other ones, but, you know, it happens from time to time. This particular sword was uh, nothing new in concept-wise, so... There wasn't really any issues other than the initial drafting stages of it. But you know, talking about drawings isn't exactly very exciting. But this is what it turned out to be, and this is how I'm going to leave it for the time being.